Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic, and this is a super quick tip about how to sculpt using something very similar to Dynamesh and ZBrush. This is only available from C4D R20 and up, if I'm not mistaken, so you might already know about it, but if you don't, hopefully this will make sculpting way more intuitive and practical for you, as you won't really need to worry about mesh topology so much while sculpting. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon and YouTube membership, and as always, a big heart emoji goes out to all my beautiful patrons and members that are on the screen right now. Follow me on Instagram at ojang, subscribe, share, comment, hit the bell, go outside, get some sun, man. Let's go. So I'll just start with a sphere. I'm going to scale it down, change the type to hexahedron. So it's all made out of quads, up to segments a little bit. Now let's go to the sculpt layout so we can have all the sculpt tools handy. And let's just quickly sculpt this sphere into a weird rock sculpture. And the classic problem is that certain polygons start stretching and growing while others shrink and get squashed. Which is a problem because polygons can't bend really. So if we got one big polygon, it stays flat and we can't get nice curves. We can try and subdivide the hell out of it, which kind of helps, but not only that we don't want to work with heavily subdivided models right away, but we also still get an uneven concentration of polygons, which is just not a good workflow. So I'll undo this and instead of subdividing, there's this option here called Volume Mesh. This is kind of like C4D's version of DynaMesh, which basically recalculates the mesh using volume voxels. If I click on the cogwheel here, I can select the size of the voxels, essentially the resolution of the recalculated mesh. I can subdivide the current mesh that exists before recalculating it. I can smooth the edges and also I have this keep objects which I'll show you what it does in a second. If I hit OK on the default settings, you can see that the polygons got redistributed evenly. Now I can keep sculpting the mesh and once I get to a point where I get the polygons distortion again, I can just hit the volume mesh again. And now I'll reduce the voxel size to get a higher resolution on the new mesh and just keep doing this. Sculpt, recalculate, sculpt, recalculate. I can introduce some smoothing if the edges get too jaggedy and you can see it smooths the new mesh out. I can also click on the cogwheel on the volume mesh and tick keep objects. Now if I go to the objects tab here to see our objects, you can see that it pretty much just put the mesh in a volume mesher. It's pretty simple, but now I can select our mesh and keep sculpting and have the volume mesher just automatically redistribute the polygons evenly as I sculpt. And once I want to get smaller details, just decrease the voxel size on the volume builder object. It's really simple, but really ingenious. And every now and then I can just hit the volume mesh cogwheel and untick keep objects to redistribute the polygons within the volume mesher. I mean, it's not as intuitive as the DynaMesh, but it gets pretty dang close and solves a huge issue I've always had with uh, C4D's sculpting abilities. Once I'm done sculpting, I end up with an even mesh, but also a very dense one. And to fix that, I can put the volume mesher in a remesh object. You can see bottom left that it's calculating the mesh, and once it's done, I can reduce the amount of polygons while keeping a mostly quad mesh, and honestly, a pretty healthy one for what I need. If it's too jaggedy, I can increase smooth iterations to like 100 or 50 or whatever you need, and I can set current state to object on the remesh object and just put it inside a new one to get an even lower poly count while still keeping a pretty decent amount of details. Obviously, if you want to rig or deform the mesh, you would want to retopologize it, but for these type of models, this is really good enough. So that's it. I was really just working on the next tutorial about these really sick procedural alien rock materials. Stay tuned for that when I encountered this super useful tool and thought I had to quickly let you know in case you didn't know about it. And now you know. Who needs ZBrush, huh? Alright, love you. Have a good day. Peace.